Please join me in prayer. Gracious and loving God, help us this day to understand and celebrate your dream for the world, to be transformed in Jesus' love, and to use our gifts to make a difference for others. Amen. It's hard to believe that next Sunday will be my last Sunday at St. Paul's, only a week away. And leave-taking can be uh, difficult and lead us to uncertainty. But we're fortunate that we find ourselves today, this very day, liturgically in a moment of leave-taking. Actually, this whole season of Easter has been about Jesus talking to his disciples about what it will be like when he leaves or what they need to do when he departs. Now, just to be clear, I am not Jesus. And this is nowhere equal to that story, to those accounts that we hear today. And yet there are resonances about leave-taking, and what happens when somebody takes leave. Now, I could tell you a story about somebody taking leave, but I think I'd rather invite you to think in your own life about a time, perhaps recently, perhaps it's just a particularly memorable time when either you had to take leave or somebody took leave from you. Sometimes these leave-takings are forced, and we can't really find much good in them, as when somebody sends a child off to a war zone, or one of those parents at the border separates from their child voluntarily because they need them to escape the violence in their homeland or just the kind of leave-taking that happens when somebody in our life dies. These are wrenching events which can wound and hurt us. And then there's another kind of leave-taking. It's kind of the leave-taking I'm doing, and it's the leave-taking that you would do when you send a child off to college or good friends move away. It's the kind of leave-taking where it's still painful to leave, it's still sad to leave, and yet we know that the leave-taking is necessary for the next steps in life to happen. But Jesus is talking about both these kinds of leave-takings in some ways. His disciples who have been following him around, who have centered their whole lives on him, Maybe may not have even imagined that he would ever leave, but he knows he's going. And so he spends these four chapters of John's gospel preparing them, teaching them to love one another, uh, encouraging them to stay together, even when others try to lead them off the path, even though Jesus is gone. And then we get to this chapter, and we have a prayer. It's Jesus' prayer for his disciples before he leaves. And this prayer really has three parts, and I think they're so helpful for us in any of our leave-taking. First of all, Jesus prays that his friends would be protected. And certainly there's the basic protection of, you know, drive safe when you go where you go, hope you don't run into any bad physical problems wherever you're going. But it's also a prayer for spiritual protection. It's a prayer that they, wherever they are going, or wherever they are with Jesus gone, it's a prayer that they won't, that they won't give in to what he calls the world. That they won't give in to despair. That they won't give in to cynicism. That they won't give in to to hurting other people or violence, that they won't give in to to out of their frustration or their fear being drawn off that way of love or that path of love. Protect them, Father, in this world. 
It's the same kind of prayer I might pray as I send my son off to college. And then Jesus prays, not just for protection, but that they would find joy. That they would find joy in their new life apart. Everything that Jesus has taught his disciples has been about the joy of knowing God's love for them. The joy of knowing that God is with them wherever they go. And so Jesus, in this last prayer that we hear today, prays for their joy, that their joy might be complete as God is with them, as he is apart for them. And finally, in the first letter of John today, John reminds us of the important end point, what it's all about. It's all about life. And so if we were to add that to the to the prayer that Jesus is praying, we might pray for life. And again, not for just survival, but that in some way in this time of parting, wherever you are and I am, we are apart, that it would always be in the service of finding life. The kind of life that wells up out of the, like the water out of the fountain behind me. The kind of of life in which we engage fully with ever, whatever challenges God puts before us each day. As we part, don't just survive, but live and find that life that God is giving you. I will indeed miss this place of St. Paul's. I will miss the community that gathers around one another in good times and in bad. I will miss the great wisdom and love that I see in so many of you in this place. But I will be praying. I'll be praying for those things I know how to pray for. And I'll also be open to what prayer God would give me. And that's the last word I would leave with you. Sometimes we don't, in a moment of parting, even know the right prayer, even know how to pray correctly. So maybe in this next week, in your own life, whatever leave takings you're experiencing in your own life, or as you think about our parish together, perhaps we can be asking together, what is our prayer for one another? Certainly the prayers of protection and joy and life. But what other prayers do we have for one another? Because I know that Jesus prayed when he was getting ready to leave his disciples because he knew that God was ready to do a new work. Let us also pray with that same confidence and that same expectancy as we take leave from one another.